we begin with only one bacteria. Two is what we then become bacteria. Each of us becomes two more bacteria. We are stronger than before bacteria. We keep growing at this rate bacteria. No longer shall we wait bacteria. The plan now unfolds bacteria. We will take over the world. Existing bacteria have survived a warfare they have been fighting for millions of years. They've had to constantly adapt and evolve to new threats, which has led to the development of all sorts of interesting mechanisms, such as chemicals that can kill or slow down other bacteria, or even share their defense mechanisms with other bacteria. It's kind of amazing to think about how much bacteria have accomplished in their fight for survival. And until 100 years ago, Bacteria were also kicking our asses. Just as an example, at the beginning of the 1900s, the top causes of death were pneumonia and flu, tuberculosis, and gastrointestinal infection. These are all infectious diseases. It was not until antibiotics were discovered that we gained an advantage and could fight back. Antibiotics allow us to perform surgeries, treat cancer, and have organ transplants at a much lower risk of dying from an infection. Nowadays, 50% of patients in a hospital at any given time are on antibiotics. Antibiotics are not only a vital component in preventing and treating infections, but they have almost doubled our life expectancy. Life expectancy rose from 47 years in the pre-antibiotic era to 78 years since we started using antibiotics. The impact antibiotics have had on public health speaks for itself. But as you may already know, bacteria are still evolving and becoming antibiotic resistant. We're on the precipice of the end of the antibiotics era. The rise of the superbugs. Superbug? You've created a superbug. These superbugs. Superbug infection. <laughs> Bacteria divide every 20 minutes, and each time they divide, there is a chance that a bacteria will acquire a mutation. Most of the time, the mutation will not enhance the bacteria, but every once in a while, the mutation is good enough to evade or eliminate an antibiotic. They are just pretty good at adapting. Now, there are several factors contributing to the spread of antibiotic resistance. One main mechanism is that the already antibiotic-resistant bacteria can share their genes with other bacteria and spread antibiotic resistance. And this mechanism can be enhanced when overusing broad-spectrum antibiotics. Antibiotics are used to kill bacterial infections such as pneumonia and also strep throat. But according to state health officials, millions of unnecessary antibiotic prescriptions are written every year. Every time we use an antibiotic, we give the bacteria billions of chances to crack the codes of the defenses we've constructed. Let me explain. Have you ever been to the doctor for an infection and without any tests, they prescribe you antibiotics right away? It always makes me feel uncomfortable knowing that I am going to be taking pills without knowing what type of bacteria is the one causing the infection. In fact, most of the time, the doctor might also not know what type of bacteria is causing the infection, but to know, they would have to perform a lab test that might take up to two days. So instead, they prescribe broad-spectrum antibiotics. These antibiotics can eliminate a wide range of bacteria, which might seem like a good idea, but they also kill many good bacteria in your body. This creates an environment that encourages the growth of bacteria that are naturally resistant to the antibiotic, increasing the chances of spreading the resistance to other bacteria. This is why it's crucial to only use antibiotics when necessary, and avoid using broad-spectrum antibiotics unless specifically recommended by a medical professional are losing their effectiveness against infectious diseases. Bacteria that have become resistant to antibiotics usually due to the overuse or misuse of these important medicines. This is our fault. Doctors overprescribing antibiotics. Got a cold? Take some penicillin. Sniffles? No problem. Have some azithromycin. Is that not working anymore? Well, got your Levaquin. Antibacterial soaps in every bathroom. We'll be adding vancomycin to the water supply soon. 
We bred these superbugs. They're our babies. And they're all grown up. They've got body piercings and a lot of anger. Another factor is when we don't take the full course of antibiotics. Since we may be allowing some of the bacteria causing the infection to potentially develop resistance to the antibiotic. Apart from the misuse of antibiotics in human medicine, there are other factors at play, such as the use of antibiotics in agriculture and pesticides. You have an industry that's knowingly using sub, sub therapeutic uses of antibiotics, creating drug resistant bacteria, and then distributing those bacteria to every grocery store in the country. When antibiotics are used in farming and agriculture, it can create an environment that favors the growth of bacteria that are naturally resistant to antibiotics. This is because antibiotics are often used to prevent or treat infections in animals and crops, and these bacteria can develop resistance over time. If these resistant bacteria are present in the food we eat, they can be passed to us. What can we do to fight antibiotic resistance? Different sectors have different roles in slowing down antibiotic resistance. As patients, we should only take antibiotics when prescribed and take them exactly as directed by the healthcare provider. Even when we're feeling better, we still need to finish the full course to make sure all the bacteria causing the infection has been eliminated. Doctors need to practice antibiotic stewardship which means using antibiotics only when necessary and choosing the most targeted and narrow spectrum antibiotic that is effective for the specific type of infection. So when available, doctors should use rapid diagnostic tests to identify the bacteria causing the infection and determine what works best. Pharmaceutical companies and scientists are constantly working on modifying or developing completely new antibiotics to stay ahead of resistance. However, there is a problem of companies going bankrupt because whenever they are able to develop and get a new antibiotic approved, they are often not used because of stewardship. They just don't get the return on investment and cannot become profitable. NGOs are trying to help with this issue, and policies are being reviewed to ensure that these companies receive the support they need to stay afloat. And the government is also stepping in to fund research and development of new antibiotics as well as regulate the use of antibiotics in agriculture. Overall, it is essential that we all play our part and ensure that antibiotics remain effective for us and future generations. Did you know that bacteria in your gut can manipulate you into eating chocolate? Check this video if you want to learn how is that possible.